Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Writing in Biological Sciences. So today we are visiting the abstract. This abstract is one of the key ingredients of writing because it describes what you've done in your main work. It's a summary about one of the three other words of everything that you've done in about 15 to course of conferences for projects over a hundred pages, so right, press it to about three hundred words. And most time, most students find this part of, of writing, this part of managing writing of great writing, hard because I would like compress over fifteen thousand words into a three hundred words. Huh. Okay, but in this video, we are going to find out what are the key things that should be in your abstracts and how you can achieve. 100 words. So we have what are those things that should be in your abstract? Now, remember that your abstract is simply descriptive. There is no need for any special analysis, no need for discussing like you do a discussion or trying to analyze your results. You're just describing what you what you've done in the work as simple as possible. So just have this in mind that your abstract is just as descriptive and as simple as possible. But the first thing you have to put in your abstract is a preamble of your topic. Usually eight to ten words long and usually a sentence. Since you are trying to be short and trying to be descriptive, just give us a short preamble because it's a brief introduction to introduce the main point of your work. Now before going down to the second point, which I call the gap to be filled. Now you've given us a preamble, a broad view, that will bring us down to the specific. You've given us a broader view of the preamble, that will bring us down to the specific. That is usually the gap to be filled. Some writers usually combine this with the preamble, but I like to separate it into preamble, then the gap to be filled. Then the next thing that should be in your abstract is the aim of your work. What is the aim? What aim are you trying to achieve? What is the goal of your writing? And this it is, it is important to keep it as simple and as descriptive as, as possible. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to show us a classic example of what an abstract should look like. I, I, I summarized the, the abstract of one of my writing that I've done for some people and it's not very student. Abstract for over 15,000 words summarized so far. So now that it's nine words, you should really be back to 153 words. Now, remember, I said the first thing is a preamble, the second thing is the gap to be filled. Now, the third thing I said is the aim of the work. What is the goal? What's the aim of the writing? The aim of your manuscript, the aim of your project, what aim I trying to write. And the next thing is the method used. Given us a preamble, you've given us a broad view, you've got to be specific, now you've given us streamlined into your aim. Now, how did you achieve that aim? That's the fourth thing. What method did you use to achieve those aims? That was your statement. Were they experimental? Did you use questionnaire? Or did you combine those things to state it in your aim and describe it? Describe it as simple as possible. I'm going to show us an example of what I'm talking about towards the end of the video, so just stick around so you can see what I'm talking about. Now the next thing you're supposed to add is your key findings. Now usually when you do um, an experimental experimental method, there are usually a lot of results, a lot of findings, but focus on your key findings. Focus on your key findings. Because you don't want to, to pack the abstract a lot of numbers, a lot of numbers and all your findings because it has to be as simple and as descriptive and you have just 300 words to use so don't, just stick with your key findings. Now if you are going to actually write what is it for? From the Kuli Kuli. Now, where did you collect Kuli Kuli from? Where did you collect Kuli Kuli from? You told us something about Granots. You told us they moved down to Kuli Kuli. They moved down to the aim of why you are doing this Why you are going to uh, you are going to isolate and find the four guys that are found in Kuli Kuli. 
and the lessons method used to identify this particular micro fungi in the And the next thing is your key findings. Now, most times, key findings come from accounts, um, occurrences, frequency. But most times, you just stick with your count and occurrence of the micro. Now, after going to your key findings, you have to put in your conclusion. So after giving us the preamble and giving us the gap to be filled, giving us the aim, giving us the method used, and you told us your findings, what conclusion did you make from your findings? It has to be in your abstract. Now, what conclusion did you make from your findings? Then that one has to be in your abstract. They have to give us a recommendation. What have you been recommended based on this conclusion? Over am descriptive <laughs> as possible. So, now, if I you know, don't worry, it was the end of the video, I will give us a classic, a classic example of what an abstract should look like. So, just stick around and move it down to the example. So, let's get on to that example. The pool of what I said I'm going to show us. Now, the topic here is the Microbiological assessment of patient contact surfaces in primary Eskens healthcare centers of Shaba, Kwande areas of local government of Lafia local government, Nasarawa state. Now, this is a, an example of an abstract. Look at the preamble or the introduction. Now, numerous investigations have shown that many inanimate surfaces still harbor opportunistic infections, including resistant strains, despite periodic cleaning. Now, due to these occurrences, now the next event is gap and the aim. Due to these occurrences, the primary healthcare facilities in Shaba and Kwani areas of Nasarawa State lack sufficient scientific evidence to demonstrate the diversity of microorganisms on patient contact surfaces, hence the aim of the study. You can see how it combined both the gap and the aim in one statement. I don't want to go over and start repeating. The aim of the of the study is to you know identify. You know, hope you understand. So I had to combine the gap and the aim together after stating that okay, this this study, this is a lack of scientific evidence. Is the gap to be filled in this particular primary healthcare center, and that was the aim of the study. Now I went down to the method used. As you can see, the method used serous swab sticks were used to collect a total of hundred surface samples from non solvent surfaces like beds in the ward, tables, non surface and consultancy units, workbenches, laboratory, and benches in the reception in both healthcare facilities. The serous swabs were sold in perfumil, buffered peptone water, and serially diluted five times before inoculated onto nutrient, maconkey blood, and potato dextrose agar. Using or plating method. Now you can see that I need, I mentioned the agar used, the method used to incubate, and the temperature of incubation, bacteria and fungi. Now following that, the colonies were counted, subcultured, and identified using our chemical procedures. I didn't go about this thing. I did catalyst tests, oxygen tests. You know, the if your reader want, if your reader wants to find out more about what kind of biochemical tests you did, you should go into your work. But you, you study that you use standard biochemical procedures to identify these microbes. Now, we're going on to the key findings. Now, in this case, I said that they were counted, but as you can see, there were no counts. No counts on my, in my results. If not, it would be bulky. I have, in this case, we, we had how many samples? We had about 100 samples. Imagine putting the Counts for about 100 samples in my findings. It will look cloggy, the numbers will be plugged up and all, so it will look all confusing. But you can see, say, according to the microbiological count, both primary healthcare exhibited similar levels of microbial contamination. If your reader is interested in your work, it will, he will go into the main work to find okay, these are the numbers, this is the table, this is the similarities. So don't go about Packing numbers into your into your abstract. No, but there are some exceptional cases where some schools require you to write a long abstract. A long abstract is usually about 500 to 600 words. But usually, a standard abstract is about 150 to 300 words. Now, the next thing is different microbes. I went down to the microbes we found. That is my key finding. The major finding. Remember, the topic is 
the microbiological assessment. So I went down to the key finding of this topic and stated that these are the various organisms and their percentage occurrence within close to them. Staphylococcus aureus has a percentage occurrence of 25%. The same thing for Staphylococcus epidemics, Staphylococcus and the rest. And I went down to the conclusion. Now, after my findings, this is what the conclusion is. The failure to properly clean, properly clean, disinfect and decontaminate patient care equipment in after healthcare facilities may be the cause of the prevalence of such organisms. That is what I concluded from my findings. I hope you're following when you're guessing it. Now, the next thing to look at is what have you recommended on your findings? Now, healthcare professionals, patients, and anybody who visits the hospital advise to practice good hygiene by washing their hands frequently, using hand sanitizers, and cleaning surfaces in hospitals with antiseptics more than once a day is recommended. As you can see, I hope that this you be able to understand the flow of how your abstract should be. And if you want to get the, the, the file for this, I can send it to you and you can see that you will do the word count. So you see that the word count is not up to 300 words. And it's very, very informative, giving me exactly what is contained in the work. Give me a summary of everything I did and what is contained, what I have that found out. If your reader needs more information, he has to go into the work because you can't pile everything into your abstract. So thank you for watching. I hope that you've learned something. If there is anything you need to add or other further questions, please drop in the comments below. And please drop a thumbs up for this video so YouTube can recommend this video to other people like us that are willing to learn about writing abstracts. Thank you very much and thank you for subscribing. Thank you for subscribing. I'll see you later.